this tutorial is going to be really quick and it's more of a review. A lot of people have been asking me to redo my third person shooter videos uh, in Blender 2.5. I've usually responded that I'm not going to do that because it's pretty much almost identical to doing it in 2.49 or 2.48. I'd just be repeating myself. But just to show you that it's the same, I'm going to go through and do as much as I can in the 15 minutes I have. So let's get started and I'm going to go real quick. If you want more detail, just refer back to my older videos. Uh, okay, so here we go. We have our default scene here. I'm going to go into top view and I'm just going to take this default cube. I'm going to scale it up a bit, go into front view and scale it down on the z-axis and that will be our ground plane. Next I can hit spacebar. I'm going to type in sphere, add UV sphere. That will be our player here. And I might actually make this ground plane a little bit larger. And we'll grab our player here. Once again, I'm not going over all the key presses. I'm assuming you know the basics of Blender. Uh, if not, there's plenty of tutorials at their website. Um, and this whole thing is just a review anyway. So at this point, let's click up here. This is one of the few differences in Blender 2.5. Uh, you're going to click where it says Blender Render up here and change it to Blender Game. And that will activate uh, Blender Game Engine physics and all that good stuff. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to check with the player here selected. We're going to make him a dynamic and we are going to make him collision bounds of a box. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to split this window so and line it up just so it lines up perfectly with that one. And I'm going to join this way. Now there is a preset for game gaming. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that thrilled with it. So I just make my own this way. We'll change this to a logic editor. And we'll hover up here and hit T. That will get rid of that sidebar we don't need. So here we go are the logic settings for our player. Make sure we have our player selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. My cursor hovering over this section. And I'm going to hit Control Up. And that will make it full screen. And I'm really quickly going to add in a few keyboards here. Keyboard sensors. Five to be exact. We'll add in a few ends here and we'll add in five motions. Once again I'm doing this all relatively fast. That's because it's review. If you want more detail check out my older game uh, Blender game videos. Let's label these. This is something I I always forget to do and it helps once you start getting into a lot of stuff into your scene. I'm going to label this one forward I'll label this motion forward since it goes with it. Label this one back. Label this one back. Label this one left. This one right. This one jump. We'll label this one left, right and jump. This makes it just easier for you to know what's going on in later portions once you start making the game larger like I said. We'll start connecting all these. Just make sure you connect the proper ones to the proper ones. Technically we can label all these center boxes too but just for time's sake I'm not going to do that. We'll connect this here and that like that and that like that okay now let's set the keys for forward we're going to do w back we're going to do s and i'm just clicking on where it says key here and i'm pressing the key that i want to activate that item and now we will check the motions here forward we're going to go on the y axis probably about 20 Back, I'll do negative 10. It'll be a little bit slower going back. You can make it the same if you'd like. Uh, left, uh, we're going to go on the rotation right here, z-axis. I want to say we want to go 1 degree for left and negative 1 degree for right. And for jump, we're going to go location z, which is the third one here. Uh, we'll put that up at 20. Okay, so we'll hit uh, control down arrow to go back to regular view here. And we'll hit P. 
I'll hit W, he moves forward, S, he moves back, A, he turns to left, D, he turns to the right, and spacebar makes him jump. You can always tweak those numbers to more fit your game. At this point, I'm going to hit 1 to go into front view, and then I'm going to hit Control, Alt, 0 on the number pad. That moves our camera to this view. I'm going to grab the camera, move it up like so. I'm going to go into a side view, and I'm going to grab it and move it in. At this point, I'm going to hit Control, Alt, Q to go to quad view so I can see my camera view and my all, other, all my other views. And once again, I'm going to move the camera on the y-axis a little bit closer to the player. And I'm going to hit rotate and rotate it on the x-axis down like so. And move it up a little bit. I think that's good right there. Eh, rotate it down a little bit more. There we go. Now, with the camera selected, we're going to shift select the player and hit uh, control P. And then click object because we're going to set parent to object. And our camera is now parented to our player. So if we hit Control alt q again to go to camera view, we can hit P with our cursor hovering over the 3D view here. And as you can see, the camera is now following the player. Okay. And uh, let's check out our jump here. Yep, he's jumping just fine. If you hold down spacebar, he kind of jumps each time he hits the ground. Let's give him a weapon. I'm going to go in the top view here. I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to type cube. I'm going to scale that down, grab it and move it over like so. I'm going to hit 5 to go out of perspective mode here for a second. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more and then scale it on the y-axis. And my gun's just going to be a box like so. I'm now going to hit Shift A and choose Empty. I'm going to grab the empty. I'm going to put it right in front of the gun like so. Let's go in a side view, see how that looks. Looks pretty good. Let's shift select the box. We have the empty and the box, which is our gun selected. Then I'm going to grab it on the Z axis, so GZ, and move it up like so. And I'm going to grab the gun, shift select the, the sphere, our player, and hit Control P and parent it. I'm going to just check, uh, select the empty select the player and shift P again make sure you're pairing it parenting it to the player also if you've had any if you've rotated any of these make sure you set the rotations otherwise your gun may not shoot straight a lot of people had that problem in the previous tutorials so here we have our gun but it's not shooting anything yet at this point let's hit spacebar type in sphere add a UV sphere uh, at this point I'm going to hit T uh, brings up this uh, side panel here again, and as you can see, we have uh, we haven't moved that uh, sphere we just had yet. Let's make the segments much lower. Let's make it eight and rings four. Makes it much less polygon, uh, lower polygon, because it's a bullet. It doesn't need to be very high in resolution. We'll hit T to get rid of that panel again. We can now scale this down like so, and we'll just put some place like that. Click on the cube here for our objects tab and rename it bullet so that we know what it is. At this point, uh, down in this logic editor, you may have to drag things around to find the view if you had dragged it up earlier. We're going to add a sensor. We're going to say always and motion. And the motion will be on the Y axis. Uh, let's set it to 50 because it's a bullet you want it to go fast. Connect all those, I'm going to hit P, boom. If you watch real close, you'll see the bullet fly out. What we need to do now is hit with the bullet selected M and then number two on your top row of numbers and that moves it to layer two. So it's on another layer. It needs to be on another layer to add it the way we're going to add it. Now we're going to select our empty. We're going to say a sensor, keyboard. I'm sorry, no, let's make the sensor a mouse left button perfect we're going to end and we're going to edit object we're going to add an object we're going to choose bullet and we're also going to set the lifetime to I'll say 120 otherwise the bullet will always exist you want it to actually die after a while so the bullet's not just flying out in space and possibly using up extra processing speed so we connect all that now, if we go back to our camera view here, we'll hit P to start the game, and if I click, 
you can see that I am shooting out a bullet. It seems to be arcing, but it's not that just because I'm turning. As you can see, if I don't turn, it goes straight. You can obviously make the bullet faster if you'd like, which might be a good idea. Hit 2 on your number row here, choose the bullet, and I'm going to set it to 1. That'd be double the speed it was just at. Go back to our first layer here. There, it's shooting a lot faster now. Let's add some stuff for us to shoot. I'm going to go in the top view, space bar, cube, and grab a cube, move it over here. I'm going to go to side view, grab it, move it up like so. With it selected, I'm going to go to the physics view. I'm going to make it a rigid. You can make it dynamic too. I've gone over in, on tutorials on the difference between the two. Basically, rigid will give it a more realistic movement when it gets hit. Give it a collision bounds of box. And at this point, uh, let's go to our second layer and choose our bullet just to make sure uh, our bullet is static and it's an actor. Perfect. Go back to first layer. Let's hit P. Oh, let's go into our camera view here. Hit P. Turn and shoot. It goes right through the box. Why is that? Because we're forgetting something. Um, do, 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 do. That is an actor. It's a rigid body. We gave it collisions. Bullet. Uh, actor. Let's give it a box collision. I don't think that's necessary. I don't know why. Okay, I guess that is necessary. There we go. We shot the cube. Let's do it again, just to make sure. Boom. Hits it pretty hard. Makes the box spin pretty good. Let's real quick uh, here. We will shift D, X on the X axis here. Shift D. And we're just going to clone the box a few times. Give ourselves some stuff to shoot at. Shift D. Shift D. Okay. Let's uh, once again go to camera view. P. Boom. We can shoot our boxes all we'd like. Now, on, right now, we have a single click gun. As you can see, I click the mouse and it shoots one bullet. Let's make a machine gun. Select your empty object here. Make sure you have your empty selected. And you have our, your logic editor here that when you click the left mouse button, it creates the bullet. Turn on right here, this little three little dots, which is true level triggers, pulse mode. And lower this number for frequency, the faster it goes. Let's give it a five. We don't want it to be too fast. Go to camera view. We can actually move that camera a little bit better, but we're running out of time here. So now we have a machine gun. Now, real quick, one last thing. This is something I had, didn't go over in other tutorials. Right now, you can see the bullet. In real life, you don't really see bullets. So let's do this. We'll go to the second layer where we have our bullet. Select your bullet. Tab into edit mode. A to unselect everything. B to box select. Oh, uh, go into uh, wireframe mode to make sure you get all the vertices here. Delete all, your, all the vertices by selecting them, except for that center row. In fact, you can make it just one vertice, that'd be fine. But basically, right now, we have a little circle instead of a sphere. It has no faces, so it will be invisible, but it will react the same when it hits boxes. We'll go back to layer one, camera view. Let's, uh, let's turn on uh, shading mode, texture mode here. And also, what we'll do is we'll hover over our 3D view here. Hit control up arrow, scroll to zoom in, make it full screen here. And now you can see I can still shoot, but you don't see the bullets. Just like in real life, you wouldn't see the bullets. So that's up to you whether you want to see the bullet. I don't know why that box didn't fall. That's the it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day. Please visit the links in the description. I'll have this blend file there. And have a great day.